All right, welcome back to the indoor wood stove installation. And things are coming along, looking pretty good so far. And now we just need to finish up the front of our hearth. And uh, we're gonna take care of that today. And uh, you'll find out finally what I'm gonna do for the inside of this thing, uh, the inside of the hearth area. So uh, I've got, uh, if you haven't been following along, I have our landscape bricks. These are called, I think they were rumble stone. I think I may have missed, miss, uh, uh, named them tumble stone in a, a past video. But I think they're called rumble stone. So these are landscape bricks. Got them at Home Depot. Uh, they have a bunch of variety you can get anywhere. And we're going to use these to make the wall in the front uh, area here. I've got the floor cut out and uh, ready to go. I'm using the tile adhesive that I used to put the tile on the wall to um, just glue these together. And I have already started the sides of the wall over here. And so I just need to level up my first row and uh, do a second row. It's gonna look like this. I had it put together before. And uh, this is kind of the, um, the idea of what we're looking for. And so I'm gonna try to mimic the, the picture here. So let's get to work. done and I talked about this in an earlier video but I've got half of the uh, stone uh, on the edge of this vinyl tile a couple inches and then half of it is sitting on the cement floor of our this is our lower level or basement of the home uh, and so the glue will stick it to the cement and also a little bit to the vinyl edge but uh, I did that just so I had a nice edge along the uh, vinyl flooring here um, so I wouldn't have to put any trim or anything like that so I kept the uh, all the glue lines back from the edge Looks like I can see a little bit in here, so I have to try to get a sponge in there and, and wipe that out. But the majority of them, anyway, uh, we kept the the glue line back about halfway or three quarters of the of the way in, so that no glue uh, shows on this front edge. Now, I'm not that concerned about the inside of this layer because this is all going to be covered. So um, this looks a little messy on the back side. Now on the next layer, I go um, here. Uh, this I want this top side of it to look really nice and clean. So. I'll only be putting the uh, glue in the center of the stones so it doesn't show on either side. Um, and then on the center of the uh, joints um, between the two uh, stones as well. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started on the second uh, layer here and get this done.
All right, so the second layer of rock is completed and it looks pretty good. So I had one spot here where the glue came through, uh, but we do have that uh, grout renew that uh, we just use a little paintbrush and we'll touch that up. Uh, we use that on the, uh, the sides there, the pillars, and that actually worked really good. So. All right, so this is going to make up the, I guess you could call it underfill or backfill or um, the cheap fill. <laughs> um, these are the kind of the cheapest bags of, uh, of prepackaged rock you can get. These are just pond pebbles. Uh, you can get these at any home center. Uh, I also could have just got, went and gotten a yard of, of stone from a landscape company. Probably would have saved about 20 bucks, but um, rather than make a separate trip, I was there, I got these. So this is going to fill in that whole area um, inside the hearth there so i built that wall in the front this rock is going to go in there and fill uh, that area almost up to the top and then i've got some nicer more expensive rock to put on the top that'll look a little bit better so this is just kind of the, the bottom fill uh, i do need to wash these out because you can see this stuff these, these come dirty they're wet um, and so i'm going to poke some holes in the bottom of these bags with a knife or a screwdriver or something and then open the tops up, fill them with water, shake it around, let the water drain out, just to get them kind of clean. I don't, they don't need to be perfect because they're going to be covered in there, but I don't want to bring much dirt inside. So. got all the the river rock uh, washed off and this stuff was pretty dirty um, but I did uh, it seemed to work pretty good in the bags I actually dumped a bag of it in the wheelbarrow and filled it up with water just to see how you know if there's any dirt left on them and uh, there was barely anything on them so I think that'll be good enough to go in there and this is the other river rock it's called Imperial River Rock and it's got these really nice big um, kind of river washed stones and uh, these are pretty cool. So this is going to be the top layer. This is what you'll see um, yeah, around the wood stove. So I think it's going to look pretty cool. Now I just have to kind of wait for this stuff to dry off just a little bit. And I know it's going to stay wet probably for quite a while because I don't really have a good way to, to spread it out and uh, let it dry real good. But we'll dump it down there. Even if it's a little damp, I'll put some fans on it as we go and uh, just dry it out in layers as we put it in there. So far, it's coming along pretty good. I uh, got most of the smaller rock in here. I've got a few more buckets to bring down, and I've just been running the uh, couple fans in here, as well as the ceiling fan in this room, to uh, dry out the the rock. Um, it's just a little bit damp still, so 
So I just put a, a layer down and then let it dry for about half an hour. And then once it's all dried out, I'll bring another layer in. But it looks pretty cool so far. Can't wait to get the bigger stuff in here and see what it looks like. isn't completely dry yet but it's pretty darn close and I love how it turned out I really like the look of the uh, of the rock in there and they cover up the um, you know the, the, the concrete blocks that it's sitting on so you can't even see them and so uh, I'm happy with how it turned out now if you were gonna do this on um, you know do something like this on a wood floor um, you know, if it's not on a basement floor like it is here, you'd, you'd want to put some cement board on the bottom, you know, just cover the whole thing with cement board, then you can pour the rock in on top of that. You just want to make sure if somehow some a coal or an ember were able to get, you know, through the rock, which is pretty much impossible. But if it were able to do that and get all the way down to the bottom, you wouldn't want it to start a fire. So, um, but uh, with all the rock in here, I think this is going to make a, you know, a nice fire safe area around here. It looks really nice and it was a lot cheaper than tiling or building a platform in here or anything like that. Um, these Imperial uh, River Rocks actually look pretty cool. Um, and as they're drying out, they, they look they look even cooler. So um, there's a bunch of different colors in here. And uh, of course you could choose any different kind of rock. There's all kinds of different landscape rocks you could use, uh, whatever look you're, you're going for. But um, I think this will uh, this will hold up pretty well in here. Well, I couldn't be happier with, uh, with how things are turning out. There's only one last thing to do for this stove, and that's to put the, the stove pipe in, which is kind of, I guess, one of the hardest parts. Um, so we've got lots of, lots of stove pipe to run here. We're going to go out through the wall and all the way up the side of the house, up past the roof line. And, uh, so that's going to be quite a project. So that's coming up here soon, and then I get to fire this thing out finally, and we get to mess around with cooking with it and, and uh, see how well it heats the house. We've got some real cold weather coming up in the next couple weeks. So... I'm excited to break this thing and use it. So for those of you guys who have been asking, this is the Vermont Bun Baker XL, and I'll put a link in the description to this uh, where you can get this stove. It's only available one place uh, that I found. Um, there might be local dealers that carry it, but there's only one company that makes a stove like this. Um, this is actually made by a company called Nectar, an Australian stove. So these are all imported. Uh, I would have loved to have bought a US, uh, US made stove, but uh, Australia is, uh, is all right. Um, and this is uh, really, I did not find anything that was American made or anything else on the market that was similar or equivalent to this. So this is considered a cook stove. Um, it actually has uh, the cook surface on the top and then it has the oven. Um, the oven in the bottom is, uh, is pretty cool. So there's a, a damper that you close and it circulates the hot air around the outside of this oven and uh, it heats this up. So uh, I can't wait to, to mess around with that and, and cook some pizzas and, and muffins and whatever else we can cook in there. And of course a regular cast iron you know, cook surface on the top of it. So, so originally when we were looking at these stoves, we were just gonna get one of those, those hearth, uh, hearth pads, those corner tile hearth pads that you can get at Home Depot and TSC. We started looking at the prices, the ones that we wanted. Uh, we didn't find uh, anything cheaper than really, you know, three, four, and even five hundred dollars, and some even went up to six hundred dollars for those tile pads that just sit in the corner. Uh, and so I really wanted to protect the walls, and I really wanted something a little nicer than that. And we were looking at the cost differences. This cost about the same as one of those uh, those hearth pads. Uh, we spent about six hundred dollars, five hundred fifty to six hundred dollars on all the supplies needed for this. Um, and we actually had a few extra things and stuff, so we probably overspent a little bit. But I ran around five hundred fifty dollars for this project uh, to get everything completed. Um, and of course, that doesn't include the stove and the stove pipe, but the whole hearth and and the mantle um, and all the tile surround and all that stuff, the whole deal. So. And this is going to offer a lot more protection for the walls and everything anyway. So I really like how it turned out and we're super happy with our decision to, to go this route. So hopefully you guys like the, the hearth. I uh, haven't seen too many like this, um, but uh, I think this is going to work out pretty well. So let, it, let me know what you guys think. Uh, of course, comments down below. Subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along with all kinds of wood burning things coming up. How well is this going to heat our house? How well is it going to cook? 
and uh, how, how well are we going to like it? Check the link in the description if you want to find out more about the Vermont Bun Baker XL wood stove or cook stove. Um, pretty cool little deal. So don't forget to hit thumbs up on the video. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one.